What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Candid Coffee. Uh, I am Doug. I'm Ryan. And uh, today we are trying for you guys the Don Pachi Natural Tipica Coffee. The Don, as we refer to it. The Don, that's right. Uh, this is one of our reserve coffees. It's really tasty, really special. Um, it's natural process, so again, uh, it means the ch whole cherry has been left on the coffee seed or the coffee beans as they dry, imparting a lot of fruit flavor, mm. body, stuff like that. Whole cherry, nothing but the cherry. That's what the Don says. <laughs> that is what the Don says. So this farm is actually owned and operated by Francisco Saracene Jr., uh, the son of Francisco, uh, a.k.a. Pachi, a.k.a. Dom Pachi Sr., uh, who was actually the Minister of Agriculture in Panama uh, back in the 60s. And uh, again, Boquete, Panama is on the far west uh, border, of, not quite the border, but far west Panama, pretty close to Costa Rica. And Don Pachi uh, Francisco Sr. is actually the first person credited with bringing the geisha variety uh, across the border from Costa Rica into Panama. So, fun fact for you. Nice. Uh, so we've got some brewed up here, and we're going to taste it. I can actually smell how fruity and floral it is from yeah, here. Yeah, it smells like a Hawaiian shirt. Cheers. Like, uh... <laughs> less floral than that, Doug. <laughs> Equally as loud, though. Mm. It is loud. And I think that's what draws a lot of people to it, is you immediately know that you're tasting something different. Yeah. This Even is if really... you're not like, oh, why this tastes like cherry cordial for sure. You're like, oh, that is something, um, and I like it. Like, it doesn't not taste like cherry, right. cherry cordial, though, for yeah. sure. Um, yeah, it's really tasty. So, a lot of times, I know for me, uh, my sort of aha moment, or my great revelation that black coffee could taste different from one another, was, was when I had a natural processed coffee like this. Yep. Um, it was probably an Ethiopian. Now, if you're used to African uh, naturals, this is, you know, this is a Latin American variety. Well, actually, this is a single variety uh, lot separation of uh, Tipica, which is uh, actually one of the oldest heirloom varieties of Arabica that was taken out of uh, that region of the world and uh, propagated and spread everywhere else, which is just why we call it Tipica, you know, it's Latin for ordinary. Um, but the processing, of the natural processing is what makes it taste so fruity, so floral. Mm. And actually, due to a lot of uh, environmental uh, challenges these days, you don't actually find Tipica growing everywhere. Um, it's usually Katura or some sort of uh, hybrid or Bourbon hybrid or something just to make it easier for farmers so they can be more um, uh, productive. But this farm, uh, again, in 2011, uh, Francisco submitted a, a natural geisha. Now, again, this is not geisha, but one of those natural... Uh, geisha variety coffees to the uh, Specialty Coffee Association of Panama's uh, Best of Panama competition, which I believe it won, uh, because at auction right after that, it fetched 115, I believe, or no, 111 50 cents uh, per pound green of that coffee, which wow. normally a, a really nice coffee like this is, I don't know, somewhere around five or six. So they actually have a huge uh, reputation for quality there, That's and awesome. uh, we're super happy to have this coffee. Yeah. What do you think is the most challenging thing about doing a naturally processed coffee? Uh, well, again, yeah, so a natural processed coffee, again, if you think about it, you're just taking fruit right off a tree and laying it out in the elements to dry uh, for you know, up to a, a couple of weeks or so. So, like, take, take the fruit out of your fridge and sit it out on your patio and see how well it does, how good it tastes, you know, after a couple of weeks. Um, but, you know, they take a lot of great care, turning it by hand so they don't bruise the cherries. Um, it's on raised beds, so you have, like, the top and underneath airflow so it dries out evenly. And uh, when it happens, man, it's just so tasty. Yeah. It's harder to do. It takes more effort and inputs and labor and things like that. But, man, yeah. it's tasty when it happens. I think that's a big reason. Um, a lot of people ask us why this bag is, like, a yeah, couple more. dollars more um, than our others. And I think that's a big reason. Uh, there's so much more... Uh, labor that goes into that because yeah you're putting a, a fruit out in the sun and that'll get moldy really quick and while we super love fermented things <laughs> not really in that capacity yeah it's true not, um, not necessarily so it's always. a pretty incredible amount of work it really so is we just really can appreciate a well done natural coffee because they're kind of few and far between sometimes yeah and this has that really full syrupy caramely sort of body to it mm -hmm. 
Um, you know, it doesn't taste exactly like those Ethiopian varieties, but what's really yeah. nice about this is uh, it's, it's really cleanly produced, mm -hmm. and you can't hide fermenti very well in a roaster. You can sort of bring out fruitiness, but man, it's just... Jeremy, again, good job on this one, man. That's our roaster, by the way. Jeremy's our roaster. For Jeremy. Oh, boy. Yeah. I... That's good stuff. We'll, it means like we'll it's a good... <laughs> Sorry, Jeremy. And that's why you're tuning in to Canon Coffee uh, from Corvus Coffee Roses in Denver. <laughs> Thanks again, guys, for watching this. We'll catch you in the next episode. Thanks, guys.